There's something magical about campaigns. It's almost like the first game of the season in baseball, when all the teams think they're going to be in the World Series, and then in the end, the Yankees always are. And the reality is that there's that hope that springs eternal in the human breast that somehow Albany is going to change because one person got elected. It's just not true. This particular race is not an ideological difference as much as it is um, a, a debate between fact and fantasy. Every day, even though we live in New York, we watch Governor Christie. Governor Christie and I probably agree on about 20% of policy. And he manifests the anger of the public, but he also has factual proposals. With Mr. Palladino, I get the impression that his, his points of view waver from one week to the next because he's really uninformed on a lot of issues. When I say that he's not fit to serve, I'm not trying to put him down as a human being. I'm saying that he just does not understand one way or the other um, how the systems of government actually work. Unfortunately, the victory of Palladino in the primary really um, revved up the Republican hopes. But I think that the whole process has uh, just become so diluted uh, by personal attacks and contradictions and hip hypocrisy that it hurt all the Republican candidates to the point that um, while one might have thought they were shoo-ins to retake the state Senate, I would say that that is uh, an open contest right now. The public has made it very clear that they are against excessive spending and they don't want to be taxed and they also don't want the government borrowing money. But at the same time, the voters have also made it clear, overwhelmingly in polls, that they are very protective of costs of, of expenditures for health care and education, which they see as priority. How the voters will be voting is very confusing to the candidates because you don't know when the voters get in the ballot box which will be the priority. 48 of the 50 states were in deficit over the past few years. Their governors, Republican and Democrat, fought admirably, tried to keep their budgets balanced. The legislature, not having any real accountability in that process, continued to try to spend, Republicans and Democrats. They'll do TV commercials telling you they're cutting spending. They're all spending. Governors around the country don't have the unilateral authority to stop a fiscal crisis, and the reason, because the legislators don't cooperate with them, and the reason, because not enough of them have paid the price for ignoring the economy and the responsibility that it, uh, um, that it incurs. If we don't change our systems of government that do allow for more unilateral decision-making, particularly when it comes to finance, our state is going to be ungovernable. And I think what all of us as citizens and all of us who care about our great democracy are going to have to start recognizing that we live way beyond our means. We created a culture that we cannot sustain, and we're going to have to make those sacrifices if our state governments are going to survive and get behind our governors and reward our legislators for making the tough decisions. You can't ask legislators to, elim to eliminate spending and then when they do, beat them up or vote them out of office because they gave you less money for your school district or for your hospital.